Greetings from Podcastville. The Church of What's Happening Now is brought to you by Hymns. Listen, Hymns is a wellness brand for men. You've heard us talking about Hymns. If you haven't yet, get on board and stop struggling with sexual performance issues. Stop st- struggling with losing your hair. You know, listen, one in four guys suffer from ED, but it can be treated, okay? Over 25% of new ED cases of guys under 40. Can you believe that? I'm 56, still slinging dick, and there's people out there that are under 40, and you're not getting an erection. Why do guys turn to weird solutions that do nothing? Things that you buy at like some voodoo shop or something like that. When they can turn to medicine and science. This is why I say to you, go to 4 right now. If you're struggling with ED, Listen, 4 Hymns is a one-stop shop for hair loss, skin care, sexual wellness for men. You understand me? Don't get defrauded by online sketchy marketplaces. Him, 4 hymns.com is the way to go. So what the church is going to do is this. This first month is just $5. We'll get you started for $5 while supplies last and subject to doctor approval. Restrictions apply. So see the website for details. So do me a favor. This could cost you hundreds of dollars if you went to the doctor, plus the embarrassing side. 4 is nice and easy. You fill out what you got, a doctor will call you, and next thing you know, boom, you get your prescription delivered right there, right there to your door. Nobody knows nothing. You understand me? So do me a favor. Go to 4 slash church. Again, that's 4 slash church. 4 slash church. For hymns. This is where you get some help. And while you're taking care of your ED problems, you also want to be fresh and ready. This is why I come at you on a Monday morning with this. Because there's a, a company called Manscaped that'll take your little lower area to a new level. You understand me? Uncle Joey's here to tell you you don't have to suffer no more. There's not going to be no stink. With Manscaped, you get it done without the pain. They got precision tools for the family jewels. You understand me? You want to keep those gunules and fucking... Tremendous order. You don't want them to stink like billy goats and stuff. They got the lawnmower 2.0. They got, this is a handheld razor with skin safe technology so it won't nick or snag your nutsack or your little pinguita. You understand me? This bad boy will leave you clean, smooth, and pain free, ready to sling dick and put it in somebody's anus. You follow me? And it's rechargeable and it's easy to hold so you can go down all the nooks and crannies. You ever open up your fucking leg, you filthy animal, and you see all those little hairs by your nutsack? You plow those down. They got another classic safety razor called the plow. You take all those hairs. Now they can lick your balls, lick your ass with pleasure. No more oniony smell. No more fucking, you know. Listen, I could I could blow smoke up your ass, but you know it and I know it. It's time to keep that area fucking shiny. Go to manscaped.com right now and get everything you need to make your balls shine and keep your dick looking fucking tremendous. This is the perfect package. You understand me? But listen, listeners, the church family can get 20% off your first order when you use code church at manscaped.com. And if you don't order the perfect package, they'll also throw in, if you order the perfect package, they'll throw in a free travel bag, all right? That's manscaped.com, promo code church for 20% off your first order. Wash your balls, motherfuckers. It's Monday. It's going to be a good motherfucking week. Take this meal, Lee. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Fortune, what the fuck? <laughs> Joey, I can watch you dance all day. Oh, I love dancing. Oh. I love it. I love all this shit. When I'm by myself, I'm the, I just, move. It's you in just my dance blood. in your house? I love all this shit. I love, I love all styles of music. Yeah. Just putting it on. Nobody's home. I get those speakers on fucking loud. That's right. <clears throat> My wife says, what are the neighbors? Fuck the neighbors. Yeah, who cares? This is why you got a backyard and you fucking rip it up. I love music and I Me love too. dancing. This old shit, I love, it. Mm-hmm. I love it. What's happening, baby? Oh, I'm just happy to see you. I would see you and then you just disappear. from. I was telling you before when you came in that one night we're at the store. Listen, my favorite thing. And some kid disrespected me the other night. I don't know what your fucking name is. Don't do it again. <laughs> when you see me in that background at the comedy store, I am as high as fuck. Yeah, <laughs> yes. Okay? Everything's kicking in at one That's time. That's right. The boogaloo pills, the reefer. I don't drink when I'm down there. Okay. And you just won't be left alone, huh? My funnest thing in life right now, the only real entertainment I have, is when 
you have a spot yeah. at whatever time, but you make yourself a promise that you're going to go 45 minutes early, mm-hmm. go in the back, zip a quick number, and drink some water and sit in Mitzi's chairs mm-hmm. and just watch the three guys before you. Yeah. You owe it to yourself. Mm-hmm. They're on a lineup for a reason. And it's so weird because I could feel my body sinking and sinking mm-hmm. and sinking, and I get sucked in by their material, oh. and I learn something. Yeah. And it may be something you could call back when you go up. Mm-hmm. I love it. That's awesome. That's re- something about that, that. I can't go to an open mic and sit in the back without people torturing me. But that last row at the comedy store mm-hmm. is for me. Like I put my, I twist my leg all the way around like a fucking sumo wrestler. Yeah. And I put it on <laughs> Mitzi's table. And people uh-huh. are like, how do you do that? You're so flexible. Yeah. I want to watch Ron White. I want to see you. Yeah. I want to watch Bill Burr. I want to see Crystalia mm-hmm. the same way you do. Yeah, what for the, sure. Why are you bothering me? And when they talk to me, they don't know they're breaking like 10 layers of, I'm that deep. Yeah. Like to go that deep without doing heroin is impossible. Like I'm focused. You're, I'm zeroed in, in the zone. on Fortune Feimster. I'm watching her hands. I'm watching her body language. That's how you become a fucking comic. Yeah. By watching a really good comic. And just studying them. Are they calling it in? Mm-hmm. Oh my God, look at Fortune. She used her hand to sell that joke. Yeah. So that's interesting. One night I was sitting back there, high as fuck, watching Bill Burr laughing like everybody else. Right. He's, like, Come he's, the, the, he's the best. And I'm not looking at the lineups. When I go down there, I don't look at the lineups. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't know where I'm going, who's up next. It's really? a comedy store. Yeah, I don't want to look at the lineup. You just know the time. It's like going to the yeah. doctor's office to get your tooth pulled. Mm-hmm. You want to know? I don't want to know. Oh, okay. I don't want to know. When I'm at the, when I, they call me and they go 1030, I don't want to know. Yeah, great. So, and sometimes they put the roster up and I'll retweet it. Mm-hmm. And that's how I'll see who's on the lineup. Right. But I really, for the most part. Yeah, don't pay attention. I don't want to know. That's mm-hmm. the beginning of the end. Right. Once you go, I got to follow Crystal Lee. And now you're dead. In the shower, <laughs> you're going to be thinking about it. Yeah. You know, and I see like Nancy, whatever. And I know it's fucking whatever her name is. I'm not, you know what I'm saying? So right. I got to follow her and I, and it's fine. Yeah. But I'm watching Bill. He's ripping apart a room. And he goes, coming to the stage. Fortune Feimster. Now, you know, six people, seven people walked out because it's Bill. Right. Me being a student of the game. Let's see what Fortune, what hand yeah. Fortune's going to bring up there. Fortune, you went up there like, Bill's got a big dick. But take a look at my nutsack. <laughs> <laughs> and you just rode Bill's energy. Oh man, and with you, my nuts set. Oh my God, you just rode the energy, and I sat in the back, and I'm like, "This is fucking phenomenal," because I'm not saying anything bad about women, but six out of ten women would have folded in that situation, especially after the set that he had in that tiny original room at nine forty-five. That's a tough, tough room. That's a tough room at yeah. nine forty-five. You know, so I always I fell in love with you. Like oh. I, I, I was like, "What is uh where did you start? Well, thank you for that. Though that means that means a lot. Yeah. Where did you start? I started at the comedy store. No yeah. shit. Yeah. Well, I started in sketch and improv, so I was a groundlings person. And you don't back then, especially, you did not see sketch and improv people do stand up. They were very separate. Very separate. And people at the groundlings were not. They How were, long were you in the groundlings for? Um, I did the groundlings for about seven years. Do you? Regret it now? Or no. Are you proud that you did it. <laughs> I'm proud that I did it because that's where I learned how to be a good actor. It was so character based, and it was creating a lot of characters from nothing, and it really sharpened my writing skills. I had to write. I was in the Sunday Company for a year and a half, and you have to put on a new sketch show once a week, every week, and it's a new show. So you're writing like five to seven new sketches a week for a year and a half. It's a lot. But it was great training, but I I started stand up the beginning of two thousand seven. What made you want to start? I just I knew there was every time I saw someone perform stand up, there was something inside of me that was like, I gotta I gotta do this. This looks like the greatest thing ever. But it I was like scared. I was like, How how do you be a stand up? What would I talk about? And I took a class. I took a stand up class. No, with improv you have six people with yeah you. you have all this and you're backup. bouncing these ideas mm-hmm. so now you're alone and now naked. i'm alone what's that show alone and naked oh naked, naked, and, naked afraid. and afraid naked yeah. and afraid now Nobody. you're naked and afraid where yeah. it's you and a microphone you're coming from bouncing ideas off and if mm-hmm. you fall they fall but leah bring us back yeah somebody you know will, take us, somebody out will take us out yeah, of there for sure you know 
I I just I did this class. You remember uh, Adam Barnhart? Absolutely. Yeah, he I took his class, and then he you know uh, he did a show every Sunday night in Still the belly room. Yeah, head. great so, guy. He's been there. Yeah, since I got here for sure. And after his class, he was like, "Why don't you do the music for the show, and I'll give you ten minutes every Sunday night." And you know, as a brand, I was a brand new comic. I got ten minutes at the in the belly room every Sunday night for a year, and it made me stronger. It made me grow a lot faster because stage time is the hardest thing to get did you get spots during the week also anywhere else where you go i was up? going up i was doing a lot of gay shows i was going to there were at the time there were all these like alternative shows and and gay rooms where like gay comics were performing so i was getting up in other places but the store was so you know coveted it was so hard it was gritty because now the store's like popping again everybody's going there the shows are full when i started it was empty 2000 it was 2007 yeah and that's when i left yeah and i could tell it was kind of weird and then rogan got thrown mm -hmm. out it was right yeah right around and that then time that was it I, I just heard reports that it was kind of weird and yeah it was hard there just no one was going to the shows and and uh so i was going up and then uh, I did a show, well, like a random show in L.A., and Brad Ernst was there. And he was like, you're you're really funny. Have you showcased for Mitzi? And I'm like, no, I'm just, you know, two years in. And he's like, you got you got to, Tommy's got to see you. And so, you know, Brett, like, made it happen. He, like, tell Tommy, you got to see her, you got to see her. And finally, Tommy let me go up, and that helped me get to the other rooms. And then that eventually led to me showcasing for Mitzi. I'd showcase the on the video because that, that I think Justin Martindale had just gotten past. She randomly saw him perform in the main room, and then she didn't watch anybody in person after that. Right, she got sick. Yeah, but I, so they would do it over video. So she watched me over a video. Oh, she would have loved you, right? There. Well, yeah, she, she she liked. saw yeah. she she saw it, and yeah. um, Tommy always said she said interest interesting interesting. She, interesting yeah give her a shot ask <laughs> yeah. her if she wants to be a doorman <laughs> i should have been a doorman i would have been you know, I good now they have two female doormen they do yeah carmen morales and uh, emily rivera yeah, no oh yeah. uh, so they have three and then jessica wallen yeah yeah so yeah, yeah. yeah. so, yeah, so they uh they she passed me up uh, i went from i did, she didn't make me a paid regular right away for a year, I was a regular in the Friday night belly room store. So I had to work my way up for a year, which, yeah, of course. That's great. That's yeah, so fun. Yeah, I needed that. And then after a year, they were like, all right, you're ready. And I went, started in the OR. And I was like, oh, my God. I mean, it was the biggest honor. I got made a paid regular in 2010. And it was before I was on TV. And it made me. No Chelsea yet. No Chelsea. So it made me feel like a real comic, you know. Because sometimes people get past, they're good comics, but it's more like, oh, what TV show are they on? Right, right. right. And not everyone, just that, that does happen. And I just felt like I got it because I proved I was a stand-up. Well, she loved characters. Mm-hmm. Okay, so like I got past a month after I got here. Oh, really? Doug Stanhope got me a showcase, yeah. the whole thing. I always, People would come to me over the years and go, has Mitzi shown you? Uh-huh. And I go, Mitzi's never done. You know, yeah. Who gives a fuck? I never really thought about it. Really? Until I got here, I went down there. Yeah. For the open mic, and they're like, "Has she seen you yet?" Mm -hmm. And then Stan Hope, Scott Day. Yeah. They both put it together, and boom. And then, she, but she loved characters. Sometimes mm -hmm. she wouldn't go. Like this guy isn't that funny. Yeah. But she saw a character there, mm -hmm. and she wanted him to develop that character. Right. And soon enough, that person wouldn't want to take it there because of his hardheadedness, mm -hmm. and they wouldn't get spots anymore. Oh, interesting. Yeah, if yeah. she wanted you to be a certain thing, and she pushed you into it. Yeah. You know that that was, and the store pushed pushed you in the right direction. I could tell mm -hmm. by watching you on stage. Yeah. That you were kind of like, I haven't been here. For mm -hmm. Fucking, uh, I was. I stayed out of the store for it seven years yeah so i don't know i didn't I, realize you'd stayed away that long i stayed away that yeah long. and then it was delia mm -hmm. that was the birth of delia yourself yeah, he was coming up dean delray mm -hmm. you know i would hear from ari i was tight with ari yeah and duncan and all those guys mm -hmm. so i would hear what was going on in the store but yeah. 
No, she would have loved you from day one. Well, I mean, isn't it cool, though, like your story and my story, like how these other comics who have gotten to a certain level, they reach back down and like, I want to help you out now. Like with Doug, with you, Brett, with me, like. I don't know. I feel like you hear a lot of stories out of L.A., Hollywood, where people are, like, so cutthroat. But with stand-up, they're like, "You, she needs to see you. You got to get in front of this. You know what I mean? Like, it's cool to see people looking out for each other there in that way. Not that everyone does that, but. No, there's people who look out for themselves. Mm -hmm. But you know what makes you a better comic is not being judgmental or something. Like, Jesus Christ. I, I wish nobody sees fortune mm -hmm. because they might go my spots. Right. If you think that way, you're a fucking idiot. Yeah. Because yeah. It's like what we have is like going to the track. Mm -hmm. My mother died of a broken heart, if you ask. Not She died of a heart attack, mm -hmm. but it was basically a broken heart. Yeah. The Chinese call it a broken heart. To this day, I still feel Ralphie uh -huh. died of a broken heart. Yeah, really? he was 900 pounds, Joy. You don't know what you're talking about. He loses when you lose that will to, yeah. to live. And my mother came from a school that if she went out and got 10,000, mm -hmm. mandatorily, she was supposed to give away six. Really? For good luck to come back to you. Mm -hmm. The problem is not everybody plays according to those rules. Right. So yeah. She would go, Lee hit the number for 10, gave me five dollars. Yeah. And then it, instead of her saying something to Lee, it would break her heart. Mm -hmm. So... With comedy, you have to be the same way. Mm -hmm. You have to look out for the people around you. You know, you have to throw them bones when it's deserved. Yeah. There's a lot of people who come at you expecting something. Right. You and I both look at a comic because you've been doing it now for how long? Uh, nine years? Uh, 2007. So oh, my God. Yeah, 12 years. That? 12, 12 years. <laughs> I'm not good at math. I went to public school. You know when somebody's faking the funk. Yeah. Okay. I know the razzle dazzle. Mm -hmm. I don't have to hear your material. I don't have to hear your joy. I just go in there, go in the room for five minutes, and I know exactly where you are in your career. Yeah. Because I've been there mm -hmm. and I've seen people, and I, you know, I still remember going to towns as a feature. Yeah. And people go, You're headlining for the future. This guy's going to be a badass motherfucker. And, you know, and I saw people come and go. Yeah. And the people who, who stayed were the people who kept it consistently, knew who the fuck they were. And stayed within their bounds and just kept plugging along little by little. Normally, you know, one week you're a feature in Michigan, the next week you're an MC in Boston. Mm -hmm. The following week you're co headlining in Maine, you know. The following week you're out there on the road, you're grinding it, you're experiencing different. Why are the New England Patriots so good? Because Tom Brady knows how to read a defense, mm -hmm. he knows how to make audibles. When you go on the road, you know, me going into the Bible Belt in North Carolina. That's a different, <laughs> a different ball game. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> I remember going into the Bible Belt at, like, the nine-year mark. Yeah. I can <laughs> honestly tell you I went five, zero for five. Oof, it's tough there. I bombed in Carolina. I bombed at fucking uh, the University of North Carolina. Yeah. I bombed the Clark, Tennessee. Mm -hmm. The Bible Belt would take a ride with me for eight minutes, and then it comes back to them that they're Christian, deep down inside, and they look at them, tell them, we, we can't laugh at this. Oh, interesting. I saw them do it to Stanhope in Nashville yeah. in 98. Mm -hmm. And I go, oh. And I swore to God, the bombing I took in Nashville, it looked like Vietnam. Oh. Like missiles were coming from everywhere. <laughs> oh, man. And I swore never to go back to Nashville. Have you never gone back? Oh, no. Now really? I go and I love I would it. Thought, yeah, I would think so. Because you mature as a comic. Right. But also, they You progress. mature as a comic. Yeah. It's good to go to the South, to the Bible Belt, and For fucking eat. Yeah. <laughs> 22 nights, you go. Oh, but I ain't shit in New Jersey. You know what I mean? I, I haven't been to New Jersey in a while. I mean, I do. I just did New York, and it was awesome. But this is, I'm talking about back when i was first touring yes i ate big shit in new yeah jersey. in new jersey but you didn't go back to new jersey now i haven't been and now you gotta come out of the box i gotta come i was last here sometime i was here eight years ago and you yeah. guys didn't like me what i eat pussy what the fuck is wrong with your <laughs> motherfucker and you take them for the ride that's right yeah i gotta there's, go back there's places i go to now that i promised i would never step in that state again <laughs> like you ever leave a fuck, the entire ever, state you ever get no I, it was it, when you bomb in a state. Yeah, in a whole state. And you're and you're on a 
and you're on the bus on the way out, <laughs> yeah, you feel like the the fugitive. Oh, for like, sure. Like they're gonna sh- chase me down and shoot me. Like oh. you're on the bus fidgeting. When you just did seven shows at a club as yeah. a feature, and you died five out of the seven shows. Mm-hmm. When you got even when the owner's paying you. You feel like shit. Oh, totally. This is the worst feeling. But you don't know that you're going to get that later. You, right. This is just the lesson you got. Yeah. Don't blame it on the audience. You didn't come at that audience prepared. Right. You didn't watch the MC. You didn't watch the headline of the first night. Mm-hmm. You got to watch those guys and see how they may. How many times you go on stage, eat a bag of dicks, guy goes up I behind never, you. I never eat dicks. Well, I know that. <laughs> you eat a bag of assholes, and the guy goes up behind you. <laughs> And he, I remember there was a comic years ago that closed with a wig and stockings and heels on. Oh. And he would get a standing ovation. Okay. And I would leave there about ready to fucking shoot myself. (laughs) You're like, what am I doing wrong? And I would go up there and eat a bag of dicks. Yeah. And I remember working with him like New Year's one year dying. Mm -hmm. I worked with him in Canada and I died. Like, there was a two year mark there where I was just dying on the road. Mm -hmm. But I know that when I I was a regular at the store already. I was already a regular at the store, but I hadn't hit that 10 year mark. Mm -hmm. And I said, you know what? I'm going to go, even though I'm a regular at the store, I'm going to go back out to war again Mm -hmm. because I'm not prepared. Yeah. In all those towns, Myrtle Beach. Mm-hmm. How oh, was that? Myrtle Beach. I like the owners. Yeah. It was booked out of Milwaukee at the time. Okay. She was really hot, and he was. Uh, they were a couple mm-hmm. that ran the club in Milwaukee. And how you made money down there was they only paid you four hundred to feature. Okay. From Tuesday to Saturday, but during the day you took condo tours. Oh, really? Uh, what are those toys? Uh, Timeshare. Time Time, oh, yeah. And if you sat through the whole year beaten, they give you $150 oh, cash. Oh, there you <laughs> go. So you would go to four of those during the week. Yeah. And make 600 or whatever it was, $75, mm-hmm. $50. I don't know what the fuck it was. But I did that and died. Like, no, that was cool because that was a vacation place. Yeah, because the beach is So there. it was different people. But that whole creative run at the time, mm-hmm. creative had just spurned uh, Carrot Top. Mm-hmm. So they had a great run of rooms. Yeah, and I, I I never forget my manager calling me at the time. He had left Creative Entertainment mm-hmm. and come out here to manage, and he goes, "I just got a call from Hef." <clears throat> he goes, "You got nine like bad reports." Oh, like out of the sixteen rooms, uh-huh. nine of the rooms said they'll never want it. Oh no, I mean, it was that type of shit. Jeez. And you learn from that. Yeah. You can't take your feelings hurt. Oh, West Virginia was the worst when I got on top of I've a never ping- performed there. West Virginia on top of a ping pong table, and you had to sign a contract that you couldn't say the word fuck. What? If you said the word fuck, they would call the police and fine you $50. Wow. Well, I just went up there and bombed because I needed that $50 <laughs> <like> for Coke. <laughs> that was where I drove the guy. He drove me to get Coke, and it yeah. was meth. And oh. I just got the meth and took it you're home. Like, th- you're like, this will do. Yeah, who cares? <laughs> yeah. So, but how, like, how much of it, how, like, what's the percentage of you bombing, or was it you, you just not being right for the room? Was it a mix of both? It was like, it seems me, like it's not being ready fault. for the room. Not being ready. Listen, yeah. it's not the punch that you throw. Mm-hmm. You know, Fortune, that punch I throw is going to punch you. It's going to hit you in the head no matter what. Yeah. It's the next punch. And how you're going to react. You block that left and you hit me in the stomach, come up with an uppercut, and I'm bleeding. Now you're bleeding. Now we got to fight. Yeah. And that's what you're not prepared for that. You just let me come out and punch you twice and you gave up. Right. You have to learn how to get yourself out of that hole. They're judging you within the first seven seconds. Mm -hmm. They're in fucking Hellsville, Hells, Carolina. And you're the first Jew they've seen in 11 years. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so they don't know about. what to do. They don't know what to yeah. do with you. They're going to touch you and your, the show. And your jersey accent. Man, you, 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 your Jewish skin is softer than ours, oh, man. Oh, God. They got good desert sun over there. <laughs> Jew, is, Jew is Laham. You know what I'm saying? You're like, <laughs> <laughs> they don't, you know. Yeah. And then now you, then you have to learn how to make yourself one of them. Yeah. And look at you from that perspective. And that's what Texas came in for me. What happened in Texas? Texas, they take the ride with you. Oh, yeah. Te- I love Texas. There's not a room in Texas that doesn't take the ride with you. I love Once you there. get in there seven minutes, 
you got them. Mm-hmm. Like in Houston, you can't say Bush. Or yeah. Anything about the Bushes in Austin, you could jump up and down on the flag, and right. they're all hippies and shit. <laughs> <laughs> but in Houston, you say something about the Bushes, oh, they, they, throw, don't... they shoot bow and arrows That's... at you. They named the airport after them. Yeah, and don't you mention nothing about Barbara Bush. Don't even no. say Bush. Can don't you even, talk about even Bush? The, even the DJ don't push, push, push in the bush. <laughs> that song is banned in fucking Houston. <laughs> don't true. say fucking Bush. But anything else that I take the ride with you. So as a feature act, I developed really well in Texas because they let you take they let the you ride. They do, yeah. And in Texas, they had hell holes during the week. Mm-hmm. And on the weekend, you did Froggy Bottoms, a B room. Yeah. And you did the lap stop. You had the lap spot, the last stop. You know, you had fucking the Dallas Improv. You had the one where Ralphie May fell through the stage. Oh, yeah. Stage, uh, uh, fritters, whatever. <laughs> the old improv, he fell to the stage. He kept it secret for years I yeah. until I found out that I would break his balls from time to time. <laughs> Didn't you fall? Spellbinders. Spell, yeah, yeah. Spellbinders. Uh huh. Spellbinders. Oh, man. Because I remember I called, talked to the lady who booked it. And he goes, don't mention my name. He goes, oh, yeah, she told me you fell through the stage. No, I didn't. The stage was faulty. <laughs> <laughs> it was their fault. It's their fucking uh-huh. fault. I didn't fall through no stage. <laughs> He's Even best. Tennessee, like when I went back to visit my in-laws, mm-hmm. I took a ride to Paducah. And they, they they were great. Yeah. I went. To, it was a coffee shop. You've been everywhere, though. You have to. I know. As a comedian, like, listen, I'm not a big, I'm not going to lie to you. I, I barely keep it together on L.A. to New York. Mm-hmm. L.A. to London, that's 12 fucking hours. I'm about to do, I'm doing you know, that. These, these guys that do this Malaysian runs and shit like that. I, oh, I adore I you to death. But I'm going to sit on the plane smelling hummus feet for 16 oh, hours. No. Them fucking, whatever oh, those people, no. they take their shoes off and click their toes. <laughs> And you gotta sit sniffing Who's it. Their toes? Everybody, today there's no class in the airline industry anymore. <laughs> Every day you hear something Everyone's new. Everyone's clipping their Every toes. Every day, somebody the other day put a pic, a Twitter picture up of a dude holding yeah. his big toe. That's right. It. Somebody, Maz, Delia, Delia posted Delia, like that. Oh, he posted somebody pictures. fucking posted it up. Yeah. There is no class anymore. <laughs> what, what would you do if the guy next to you started doing that? I would fucking take the plane down. I would fucking, oh. I would take my sleep apnea machine and hit him oh, with it. It's so crazy. You have no fucking idea. People do idea. the craziest, craziest stuff things. There's no more. And as it is, like I already, like, all right, people, all right, let's get out of the way. You gotta take care of yourself. So I pack a pack in my sleep apnea machine. Uh-huh. I got a pack of fucking disinfectant wipes and yeah, no germ wipes. I wipe the seat down. That's what my fiance does the, too. The tray, they say the tray has more germs than fucking, if you take a condom and come in it a thousand times, <laughs> put in the crack hose ass, leave it there for a year and pull it out. <laughs> that fucking tray has more germs than that dead fucking condom. Yeah, because people like change their baby's diapers yeah. on that thing. You get on a fucking plane, <laughs> the first thing you do is you wipe that down. I got a straw by the fucking window. I'm, I'm, I don't give a fuck. I didn't it, know you were such I a germ. Alpha, I'm not a germaphobe. Yeah. But we're comedians. You got to say. Uh, what happens if you catch the flu for 10 days? That's true. I got to reschedule now. And then you go out too early and you're going to get sicker. Your lungs. Yeah. <coughs> your cough. Do you ever wear the mask? On a plane? Yeah. Unless I got Scott's tape to put on my eyes like a Japanese. <laughs> Who else gets away with that? A white dude with a mask, I got to go smack you in the fucking face like 10 times. <laughs> Like, leave that to the Japanese. They do that, all right? Yeah, okay. You're embarrassing me. You're I've from never, Iowa. I've never had a mask on. No, you can't wear a mask on, but you need to eat something to protect yourself and, mm-hmm. you know, your, your hands. You don't know. Well, f- I well, wash my hands before I take a piss out of respect for my wife. I don't want to suck a hey, dirty dick. There you go. And even now, I'm over 50. I don't want nobody sucking my dick no more. It's disgusting. You don't want any no, blowjob. No, 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 no. I wouldn't put that on nobody. Oh. That's, that's psychological abuse. All right. I'm 55, 56. I mean, that's nice. That's really you get nice that of you. smell of dust. It smells like I, <laughs> I scratch my nuts at night and smell it my smells finger. Like it smells like smells like all folks home. You know what I'm saying? Like Moth balls? It's not moth balls. Oh, man. What? It's got old man balls, too. I don't want nobody You're to You're really nice because most guys are like, I don't give a shit. Just no, do it. no. I've always been a three shower a day type of guy. My oh, nuts okay. are always tip top magoo. I put the corn starch down <laughs> tip there. Tip top magoo. Well, let me tell you something. Even with the corn stop, you can't stop the 50 age of 56. It happens. You I just get those dusty balls. You put corn starch right away? When I come out of the shower. I oh, wow. My, I put my fucking, what are those panties I wear? 
What are MeUndies, your panties? MeUndies. And you dip and them I, in cornstarch? No, I take cornstarch powder. Yeah. It comes, you can buy powder at the supermarket. Whatever. I'm trying mind. to learn how to take care of yeah, my balls. Gotta, well, well, ladies can't. <laughs> no, let me tell you what the problem is. Women can't put that. See, when I was growing up and you ate somebody's pussy. Yeah. You could smell the. the Talcum powder. Baby powder. Yeah. Oh, that everyone used to use baby yeah, powder. because it, it would marinate the pussy. It's like putting saran wrap on a pussy. Oh. <coughs> it marinates it nice, and it keeps the inside nice and moist. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But then women started losing their kidneys and eyeballs. Every night I'm watching TV. Because they were using baby yeah, powder did you, down did there? Did you take out, did you use talcum powder in the 80s on your oh. pussy? Call us now. Your ovula might be missing. Oh, my God. Oh, I didn't know that. I don't know what an <laughs> ovula is. I don't know it's either. Really, just, you were like, they all had uh, great smelling pussies, but they died of cancer. They all died of fucking ovarian cancer Holy or something. Holy shit. So you're not supposed to put talcum powder. But uh -huh. they never said nothing about the dick. And I grew up on talcum powder. And so done. far, you're you're good. So. Yeah, I'm good to go. Yeah. But I got to tell you that after like after thirty, my dick was fine until about twenty four. I fucked this. Wait, chick. at twenty four, it started changing. I had some wang to it. Like okay. Tuna fish. Like I, fucked, <laughs> I used to bang this chick without a condom. She was a filthy animal. I still talk to her. What a shame. And my <laughs> dick changed smells for like a, a year after you had sex with her. Yeah. And Wait. Then I went back to normal. It wouldn't go away if you showered. Yeah, if I showered, it, oh, okay. it, it went away on the outside. I thought it like marinated the... But deep on the inside, if I scratched my helmet at night while oh, I was watching no. MTV mm. and snow my fingers... Tuna fish. It was tuna fishy. It was uh, kind of weird. But did it make you nervous to have sex with women after that? Like, you were you afraid that that was going to happen again? Or you were I was like, always... Let's get some out of the way. Okay. So when I was, <laughs> Joey, I, I can't wait to hear. I was 14, 15, 16... A buddy of mine came to me like a man. He goes, listen, I got something. Mm -hmm. Would you come with me to the clinic? Mm. And I went mm. with him from the clinic, and I sat across. I don't know if he was gay. I'm, I'm not going to say anything. Yeah. He had something on his mouth, like a growth on his mouth. Yeah. He was like number 37. <laughs> it was like number two. <laughs> and I had to sit there and look at him the whole time. Uh -huh. He had like a VD growth on his oh, mouth. Oh, interesting. And besides my Catholic upbringing, I always had that. In, that image was that in your image. head. So until the age of 18, I can't lie to you, I wasn't going for blowjobs. Uh, right. Like there's something wrong with that fucking guy's mouth. Yeah. I kept thinking about his mouth. Then as I got old and I started doing drugs and you start eating ass and pussy. Once you're eating you ass, anything goes. Those. Yeah. Once you, and even if it's got a little dirt to it, like sometimes they took a shit at two. But you're eating their ass at nine, and it's still got a little wang to it there. You know what I'm saying? But you don't give a fuck. What are you gonna embarrass them and tell them to go use the bidet? No, you already you already went in the cave like the little Thai kids. Oh There's my no god! <laughs> <laughs> There's no coming back. <laughs> Once you go in the cave like the Thai kids, there ain't no coming back. You, know you get saying? stuck. <laughs> uh, oh, poison and fish that you cracked. Joe, you, I get. Listen to you talk about <laughs> eating, asshole. eating ass. What the fuck? All day. That's what we share in common, you and I. I've never eaten ass. You Thank never, you. I've oh. never eaten ass. You never licked a woman's ass off? No. So you're the boss. I can't. You're the Captain Kirk in the relationship. Is that what that means? Yeah, you put the strap on on and hit him in the face and tell him you better have my dinner, bitch, and my paper. You know what I'm saying? I would assume that if you're eating. Well, I, you, know, I well, you eat pussy. Right. Yeah, I do that. Okay, so I when do you're down there, you see a little asshole staring at you. Just, you just, just, give, leave it, it alone. just give it a whirl. Yeah, you don't give it a little. <laughs> I, ha I haven't ever before. Even this fiance, I wouldn't marry her unless you're she's at least a, She money. is a germaphobe. She doesn't like that stuff. A lot of women don't. You're not allowed to. Once you eat the pussy, you got to eat the pussy. Yeah. But then you got to tongue the asshole and finger them. And can't then double take dip. But no, no, you can't go from the asshole to the pussy. Right. That's Same with wiping. Part. So what do you <laughs> do? Like the asshole? Like, no, you once you eat the ass, you got to stay clean focused up. on the ass. Keep fingering them. Put your cock in their mouth. And then before you kiss them, out of respect, you go get some double Listerine. And you wipe your face with Double a germ thing. You know I'm what? learning so much today. It's so weird. Like, I really am when you Like when you're 20. Like when you're doing comedy. Right, like on the triple run. Yeah. There's so many women that you'll bump into mm -hmm. and because you're on stage and they're from this small town afterward, you're like a fucking celebrity. You mm -hmm. can tell them whatever you want. You know James Franciscus, you know Steve McQueen. Mm -hmm. They're like enamored with you no matter what you look like. Right. You don't know how many blowjobs you get on the road and then at the end they want to kiss you and you're like, <laughs> if you blew me, who else was in line? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> 
I'm so that's where you draw the it. line. You didn't, no yeah. kissing. Unless they, you know, you want to get it on or whatever, but that's how you get the flu. Question. Sure, There's true. a lot of what? pussies and dicks that got the flu. Yeah. You ever eat pussy and get the flu? What? I t- <laughs> Don't. You ever eat somebody's pussy and the next day you, your throat feels weird? <laughs> Maybe I never put two and two together. I don't know. Yeah, sometimes you eat like weird, strange pussy and yeah. you have a sore throat. What? You wouldn't kiss them. Would you eat, lick their asshole? Yeah. <laughs> I would lick their asshole. The asshole is clean. The asshole doesn't, doesn't the give face. you the flu, I guess. No, if it's staring you in the face, you just can't leave it there. It's like yeah. a little puppy. You ever see a little puppy? You always go back when you pet him a little bit. You know what I'm saying? Like That's just him. like an asshole. <laughs> I can't believe you never licked nobody's asshole. Yeah, question, Joey. Question. How but, long have you swung on the other side for? Uh, I came out at 25. Any men ever? I never had sex with a man. I'm never a, I'm a gold star. Or you, or you knew it from early on. Though. I I think I might have had sex i might have had sex with a guy back in the day but nobody wanted to but i think part of it is that when you're gay even if you don't like i didn't it wasn't like i was in the closet i just didn't know that i was gay i didn't realize that about myself and i think that (gasps) that when you're gay you put out some sort of i don't know if it's pheromones whatever and the other person picks up on it so whatever i was putting out not realizing it was not received by men Men always like came up to me like a buddy, high five, and immediately there was always a very buddy type of relationship. So I never really dated. I didn't. Ha- I went on a few dates with guys, but I never had like a serious boyfriend or anything like that because I was just friends with with males. But I, I had had I been had I had someone in my life or dated someone like that, I might have had sex. But it just did not happen. When was the first time you looked at a woman and ripped her fucking shirt off? It was like when I, that age I came out, 25. 25. Yeah. So I was a bit of a late bloomer. If I started earlier, I'd probably be, uh, I'd probably had licked ass. <laughs> <laughs> because I was a late bloomer. I, it, it was too far down on the totem pole, you know? <laughs> I'm the same way. No, because he spent the last two podcasts saying I should look ass. I don't. I have no interest. In you don't want to do it. What is the who 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 does it pleasure the most? The person getting the ass licking or the person doing it? Let me ask who you benefits? A Let me ask you a question. You're driving home uh-huh. at the end of a long day. <laughs> you know what I'm saying your dog got hit by a car. <laughs> your mother died of leukemia. That's quite a you day. Got, you got one thing going yeah, for you. That's the worst that day. That somebody licked your asshole at some point in your life. <laughs> that's who you cling you're, on you're, to. You're a winner. You know, yeah, like my yeah. dog got hit by a car, but guess what? Got- In 82, a girl <laughs> lapped my ass like it was fucking honey and she had no fucking spoons. There you go. You know, I mean, no, I don't know. I don't, I don't, I didn't like it. I, you weren't into it? I like having sex with a woman and eating her ass as part of the whole thing, like late night, you know. Like a different part. Of it. It's like you have seven fucking. You go to a French restaurant, they give you three dishes. The same thing. You gotta suck the titty, you gotta suck the monkey, and then you gotta get the dessert and the asshole. You gotta get the. It's a fortune cookie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh, man, Joey. I'm learning oh, so much. I'm learning a lot, too. Me, too. Yeah. I, I learn something new every day. It's Monday morning. If you can't drop fucking knowledge, what I are you know. Gonna do? I feel like this. This particular episode will inspire more people to go out there and try it. Well, they should try something. Yeah. Something's got to work. You got to I mean, change things up every now and then. So what do you think about your future? I mean, you had a, you had a TV deal for a while with my girl there. Um, I Yeah, I, I mean. You don't stop. You I don't stop. stop. I do a lot. That's why, you, you know, we were saying I haven't been around the comedy scene here in L.A. lately. I have a weird trajectory with my stand-up. I told you, you know, I started at the comedy store. And then by, I started in 2007. I got Chelsea lately in 2011. I went from a fairly new comic to that show, which was very popular at the time. I became, I went from new comic (coughs) to headliner, like that. So I had to, like, learn how to become, I didn't get the opportunity to go on the road with people as a feature, as an opener. I would have loved the experience of watching other comics I would watch them coming up at the store, you know, but I didn't go. I didn't get to learn from anybody on the road. I was just like figuring it what out. What was the experience like when you first got thrown out there? How many years have you been on stage when you first got thrown out there at the headline? I started. I started to stand up at the beginning of two thousand seven. I was headlining by summer of two thousand ten, 
because I did last comic standing okay. and then Chelsea Lately back to back. And so I was terrified. I'd gone from just trying to figure out my 15 minute spot at the store to like, oh, now I got to perform minimum 45 minutes. I But that's where my groundlings training came into play. I started doing a lot of audience. I, I started talking to the audience a lot. I started doing a lot of crowd work until I could get my material built up. But so basically, like, since then, I've just been hustling. I went from Chelsea lately to uh, acting. Acting's kind of come to the forefront for me. Bill Bill Burr always gets mad at me. He's like, quit this acting crap. You're a stand-up. Get out there. And I'm so I've been focusing more on stand-up lately. Not that I'm pushing acting aside. But I don't know. I'm just doing everything I can to just work. You know, I did the Mindy Project for three seasons, and then I did this NBC show last year. But this last year, I've been not only getting back into stand-up a lot. I've always toured. I never stopped touring. But I've been trying to work on my new hour. I want to try to sell a special. I've done two half hours, but never a full hour special. For somewhere. I don't know. But I, I just feel like until no, I... No, no, the two half hours. Oh, the one, one half hour is Comedy Central... And one was for Netflix. They okay. did like this uh, series of okay. half hour. Right, right, right. But I feel like until you do your hour special, you don't, you know, that's like a coveted thing for stand ups. And I really want to make that special. And so I'm working on that. And then I've been developing uh, a lot of stuff. I sold two movies that I wrote f- with two uh, of my writing partners to Amblin, that's Steven, uh, Steven Spielberg's company. So we're seeing that through that process. How hard and, is that process? Oh, writing a movie is hard. That's a hard process. It's really hard. I had sold two TV pilots before that, and they're hard, but nothing near running a movie. Because it, we've been on this, we've been working on this one movie for the last two years, and wrote, and that's just with Amblin being attached. We were working on it a year before that. And it's always evolving, always changing, and you have to keep up with 130 pages, like with a pilot. It's like 35 pages. You can keep track with 35 pages fairly easy. You're like, oh, I know what happened on page four and page 20. They're not that far apart. When it's 135 to 150 pages, you're like, oh, my God, I don't know what happened in that scene on page 50. I have no idea. And it changes so much that you're like constantly losing track of your story. But you know, it's cool to try. I mean, I hope I get the chance to get them, to make them. I'd be, I would be, in the movies if they got made. Now let me ask you this: When you went to pitch them, mm-hmm. you went to pitch a thought, or you walked in there with the script prepared? The first for one, the people at home. The first one I sold, we sold as a script. Uh, I had done a tiny part in this movie called an Office Christmas Party. I played this Uber driver, and Steven Spielberg's company produced it, and they were like, or they was the studio. And um, they were like, yeah, we want to work with you. What do you got? And I was like, well, <laughs> we, we've been working on this script and they bought it. And so that was really cool. But then you go through a bunch of rewrite processes with that. And then the second movie we sold to them in October, we sold as a pitch. We went in there and told them the idea. I mean, you think it out really in detail. We We worked on an outline for like six months. And then you go pitch that. And they bought that. And then we just turned in the first draft. People so, have no idea how many stars have to be aligned. Oh, so For many. either a pilot, a TV show. Mm-hmm. I saw so many people have three drinks in them and go, my pilot gets picked up. I'm going to make you the bartender. Uh-huh. My pilot gets picked up. I'm going to make you this. Yeah. My pilot gets picked up. And it never, ha- it never, it never happens. happens. I still remember people who did deals with Dave Letterman. Yeah. And they would be bragging. And those are the worst ones to get in business with. Oh, I with know, right? Because CBS don't want to deal with them. They don't want to deal with David Letterman. They know the red tape. <laughs> they want people who don't know what they're doing so they can smack them around. Right. And they can take notes and tell them you'll never work again. But mm-hmm. if you get the Conan O'Brien, Conan's going to go, shut the fuck up. Right. So they never. So I saw all those comics mm-hmm. that went through the process. Yeah. I saw comics that, you know, shot the pilot. And one of the, Carlos Mencia had one of the highest rated pilots of all time. Really? That's a well-known fact. Mm-hmm. Like 100% across the board. Yeah. A Barney Miller show in his heyday. Right. 96, 97. Mm-hmm. 
the last minute. I know another girl who sold a show and they shot 11 episodes of NBC. And didn't air any? Didn't air any. Oof, that would be painful. You know, so yeah. you never really know where you stand. All you can do is thank God I'm here today. Yeah. Thank God this check is clearing today. <laughs> uh -huh. They got craft service. They got bagels. They got locks. Yeah. They got onions. I'm good for today. People really don't understand right. the process. And then the notes. Oh, yeah. And you're taking notes not from a comic. You're taking notes from a college student. Yeah, or somebody who's no somebody who went knowledge to Syracuse. of comedy. Yeah. No, not, you know, went to Syracuse. I'm not putting down anybody from Syracuse. I'm just saying that they're the managers and agents and a lot of people you deal with. Yeah. And you went to school for four years. Mm -hmm. In turn, we've been at Groundings for seven years. Yeah, on stage. Fighting at the comedy touring. store for five. Mm -hmm. And on the road, you got to listen to what the fuck we're saying. Yeah. Here. You know, when, when Chappelle <clears throat> did that thing with Comedy Central, mm -hmm. I knew that what that was about. That really? was about... Some guy coming and telling me who's got the number one show what time it is. Take, do yourself a favor. Get the fuck out of this room. Yeah. Go get your fucking degree from USC <laughs> fucking acting school uh -huh. and go show it to somebody who matters to. We're over here in the trenches. Right. That's why we respected Roseanne in the beginning. Mm -hmm. Roseanne told the network, go fuck themselves in the early on. Yeah. Her goal was to beat Cosby. Right. When they beat Cosby, they tried to go in and accept responsibility. And she's like, no. Mm -hmm. It was me who handpicked the staff of writers. They yeah. knew exactly what was going to work. Your guy's idea was not going to work. Right. You know, when you look at the Rocky story, they wanted Burt Reynolds for the part of Rocky. Mm -hmm. They wanted Ryan O'Neill for yeah. the part of Rocky. You know, it's like they come to you tomorrow and they go, we love this, but for this role, we think yeah. this guy. And you're like, 100% Are that you could happen. Fucking crazy. <laughs> yeah. I don't want that guy in my fucking movie. And that's the crazy part. And I learned that. I sold a pilot in 2015, and it was for ABC, and Tina Fey was the producer. And Right, I remember that. Yeah, Annie Potts played my mom. John Carroll Lynch was my dad, and we shot it, and it tested really, really high. And you, you have all the, the stars you think are aligned. You think one of the, the co-creator was a 30 Rock writer with me, and, uh, and then all of a sudden you just get that phone call that's like, ah. We loved it, but it's not happening. And, you know, it's a huge... I think I learned more from that no than anything in How this business. Feel? I mean, it felt like shit, you know? Because it was my story. It was based on my life. And it almost felt more personal, like you're being told no because it's based on you and your life. That was one of the hardest no's I've ever gotten. I felt like shit. And, and I hate this, but it made me put my computer away for like a year. I did not develop, I did not write anything for like a year. And it, and then after I finally like came out of that, I was like, fuck that. Like, I'm going to, I'm going to keep making stuff. I'm going to make this happen. And I've been writing for the last two and a half years nonstop. How disciplined are you? I'm not as disciplined as I want to be when it comes to writing stand up. I really need to be better about making myself write. The problem is I get so busy writing these other things that stand up sometimes goes to the wayside um and, but when it comes to movies and and tv stuff i'm very disciplined i have two writing partners and we we every day we get on the phone at 10 a.m and don't stop until four and we do it monday Six through hours. friday really mm -hmm. how'd you get off today uh <laughs> well we just started a new idea okay and i just and we've been working on it all week and i just said uh can we just pick this back up when i because i'm in i'm in london this whole week and from the f fourth through the ninth where you performed at the soho theater out Lunch, in london and you sold out all those shows? I, they're not sold out i mean they've been doing well i don't think they're sold out but it's been a good um it's a good turnout so far. So where else, where else are you going while you're there? Just London, doing That's six it? shows there, and then I want to go to Paris for fun for a few days. You bringing the fiance? Oh in? yeah, maybe we'll get into that ass licking. Oh yeah, what the <laughs> no, fuck? she'll never, she'll never get in into Paris. That. You might have to <laughs> you put one of those frog legs up her ass. About <laughs> no, it. she would you never. Like the fucking anchor for maybe the the, the, the KTLA guy. Uh, oh you my put god, meth up his ass. I was listening to that on Stern. Can you believe that oh shit with a mask god. on? Yeah. Fucking getting fist fucked. But that's when you're like, you know. That's not gay. 
That's that's. You don't that. think that's gay? Well, he, yeah, he had a guy that, with no, him, didn't he? No, no, no. He was with a dude, wasn't he? Yeah, I don't think that's gay. I, I like when two men are together and they love each other. <laughs> Come know, on, and they Joey. fuck each other up the ass <laughs> and they go to the movies and they share books. That's just that's a good. Gay. That's just a good. Your romance when it comes to being is gay? fucking destroyed. It's just like uh, you know what I'm saying. It, but it seems I pretty see gay a, to me. I could, no, I could see a woman putting the fucking strap on on, like and he, he would, having fun with their wife. Right. You know that's what it calls for. I don't know where fist fucking comes <laughs> in that category. When I see gay like guys S&M marching, or S&M when stuff. When I see gay guys marching, yeah, they look really cute. That's and gay. They're dancing to no. No. It's beautiful. Oh, it's beautiful. It's love. Yes. Nowhere in that is there a fist in somebody's ass. <laughs> that we know with of. shit on your fingernails. You understand me? <laughs> you can't be satisfied with a regular dick. All right, switch up. Go upgrade to yeah. a nice big black Nigerian dick like Jesse Smollett. Get one of those fucking pogo sticks <laughs> that if there's an earthquake, you can hang on to. There you go. And you can look like one of those motherfuckers from Katrina on that black dick. <laughs> but a fucking fist? Yeah. Look at the size of this fist. Have you... Would you want this? Anybody want this? That's a fucking ass. No, no. Maybe I, maybe the guy had small wrists. I was looking at Mike Tyson's hand the other day. I'm like, what if he ever fist fucked that dude? That dude would be dead. This That's, this would destroy you, right here. This yeah. Up to here. And he was getting fisted in the butt. Yeah. How do they know that? Yeah. How do they know that? They I got guess that once they do the autopsy and they can fit a fucking Tonka toy in your ass. <laughs> you, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> While I'm doing the autopsy and I flip you over and I go, hold on, hold, 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 hold. hold on, Something's look at this, right and all of a sudden you go, hello, and you hear goodbye. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And there was guys. only one other person in yeah. the room, and he's sitting there with a guilty look on his yeah. face, and like, the dirty fingernails, and dirty fingernails, That's and he's trying to wipe his fucking hand off. Yeah. I, do you wear a glove? <laughs> I mean, if I put my hand up somebody's ass. <laughs> I hope that you would wear one of those long dish gloves or something and you lube it I, down. But if you're into that kind of stuff, you're not wearing a glove. I'm not into that, but I'm just not, saying. No, like, no, no, not you, just a person. Yeah. It really disturbed me. Like that's That and Jesse Smollett last week really fucked with me. Yeah. Because on one hand, you know, I see how hard everybody works mm-hmm. to be fucking accepted. Right. You know, I love goofing on people. I love having a good time. Mm -hmm. But I also see when people are just trying to be accepted. We have a dear friend who's a gay comedian. I love him to death. Mm -hmm. You know, my little buddy Ian, I love him to death. That that doesn't mean nothing to me. But even gay people, can you imagine gay guys at a bar and all of a sudden this this guy was fist fucking. Even they would go like Hollywood gay guys. You know what I'm saying? It's like. (laughs) It's a lot. my, (laughs) My friend was at a party one night. And he's uh, he was friends with the gay couple, and they had like other gay couples over there. Yeah. And somebody mentioned uh, a comic friend of his, mm-hmm. and the one guy goes, "Let me tell you something. I went to the comedy store and saw that guy. He said queen. He said, what's the chick that got killed in the car wreck? Uh, Princess like, Diana. Princess Diana. Yeah. He goes, I went down there, and that guy called Princess Diana a cunt. And he goes, the whole room of gay guys went." <gasps> <laughs> At the same time, <laughs> that's gay. That's gay. For I love sure. that stuff. Yeah, but nowhere in the gay manual. <laughs> Do you hear about a fist double fucking? fist fucking with two meth rocks up your ass? Meth, the it meth seems like rocks you're offended. Crazy. And disco it lights. Really Wendy was and married fucking, with a kid. You're I mean, like, married, whoa. Yes, I'm very offended, Lee. Yes, I'm Lee. very fucking offended. That you were let. I did coke for twenty seven years. <laughs> you never put it up your butthole. Never. Not even thought about it. Like, not even one finger. Not even one night would I sit there and go, "Wait a second, I need to be a little bit higher." Because <laughs> I heard when I first moved here, yeah, I had an agent for a while, mm-hmm. and he was old school Sinatra age, right. but he was old school flame. He was a theater agent, mm-hmm. and he was very dear. He was a great agent to me. Yeah, he didn't get me out enough, but when he got me out. It was You're good like, stuff. Damn. Yeah. Like he didn't get you out ten times a year. He got you out six. Mm-hmm. But you were in front of heavy fucking duty. Oh, people. that's cool. And one day I took him out to lunch, and he was just telling me about the seventies gay scene. Really? In Hollywood, and how you would go on Ivar by the Gold Gym. On Ivar, is it uh, between yeah. Santa Monica? Oh yeah, is yeah. It Ivar. Uh, it's a different think- street. There's a near, gold near Gower. Gower. Gower, yeah. He goes, that, that's where all the underground gay places were. Oh, really? And there would be a red light would be on. And those red lights, that means you went downstairs and mm. they would put ecstasy and burn it down with Viagra 
and put it in turkey basters, mm-hmm. and you would shoot it up your ass. No, uh. And when he was, it's like me going to you. Let me tell you something. About yeah. Last night, I went to a fabulous party. <laughs> You'll I, never I'm guess. Forget telling me the office because my friends and I, because I never forget his office was across the street, Laurel Canyon and Sun and Ventura. Uh huh. If you go north, there's a Starbucks on the corner. Yeah. If you cross that street and take ten steps, he was upstairs. Okay. And I would sit up, you know, he was real close to me. I would come up to do other things, and I'd stop, and his name, and I'm not, I can't even say his name. I would go up there and say, what's going on? He'd mm-hmm. go, oh, my God. Like, <laughs> I've been calling you for three days. What happened? Oh, my God. He had that turkey baster up his you butt. You put the Viagra and the ecstasy, and you put the, tur- Ooh, well, the, the juice cow. in your asshole, uh-huh. and just go off the fucking rails. Again, wow. I've mugged some people. Uh-huh. I've done some crazy You've seen things. Some things. I never thought. Of putting a turkey baster up your ass. Who would you trust with a to, turkey to baster? To be the one in charge of the dosage? Lee, come here for a second. <laughs> no, I mean, I would get the dosage ready. Yeah. But then I'm like, Lee, help Someone's got to do it. You know? Yeah, it's but like, if you're gay, I think you don't care who's doing it. You're just like, put it up there. Me, but I it's know. cool. That, I like that you're, you've are you always been so accepting of gay people. Because sometimes, you know... You're just, you seem like the type who's kind of like, hey, you do your thing, I'll do my thing. Uh, my mother had a bar, and we were involved in Santeria, and my mom had a lot of gay friends growing up. Mm-hmm. And when I was about seven, there was one I used to always go to beef with. I would always go to war with him, because he would say things to me, one of these days I'm gonna fuck you. Oh, God. <laughs> like, yeah, like right in front of my mother. Oh, my, my mother God. would go, leave him alone, will you please? Yeah. <laughs> he would say crazy shit to me. <laughs> And one day I said to him, say that again. I hope you fucking die, cocksucker. <laughs> Two days later, he died. No. Oh, no. Yeah, no. He died. <laughs> my mom sat me down. She goes, that's why you don't say that shit to people. Yeah. And, uh, and then we had a lot of gay friends. But mm-hmm. there was one that really, at that age, I didn't understand. Right. So it didn't matter to me. I didn't know mm-hmm. what maricon meant. Mm-hmm. His name was Madinga Maricon. That's what they called him on oh, the street. That was part of his nickname. That was his name on <laughs> yeah. the street. Uh-huh. And Martina Maricon was a seamstress for a big time play like Cats. Mm-hmm. Well, it, no, it wasn't Cats because I was 12 or 13, 11, and I was just getting into music. Yeah. Was this and in Jersey? This is in North Jersey. Yeah. And before he went into the city at night Mm -hmm. he would stop at my mother's bar and have a drink yeah some nights he would have a broken wrist some nights he would have a black eye really some nights he would have a thick lip and i'd go what happened Mm -hmm. and he'd go to cbgb's and he'd say the fucking guys down the corner they jump us every night oh really this is 1970 Mm -hmm. when gay guys were still getting jumped and yeah and new york was hardcore new york was hardcore they had their own area but it was hardcore. Yeah, I with I didn't know he was putting his dick up people's asses or people, but I was too young to fathom. Right. What enamored me to him was that he always spoke to me. He found time to talk to me, mm-hmm. and he would always tell me the band he saw last night. Yeah, like he would see the Clash and you know uh, the fucking guy who did heroin, and he would talk about all those bands to me, mm-hmm. and I would hear about CBGB, but I was too young. And then something happened one day that changed my whole view. In the corner of the bar, there were these two bookmakers that were brothers. Mm -hmm. And they would sit there from 10 to 4 and drink. Yeah. And one day Martin came in, and there was a shuffleboard game behind. So Martin was here, and those two guys were Lee's picture. You see Lee's picture? Mm Mm-hmm. And the one guy goes, hey, hey, look who it is, Martina Maricón. Mm-hmm. And Martin put like five dollars on the bar, and he fucking pulled a gun out of his jacket and he pointed at the two guys and he goes, "Oh shit!" Until you suck my dick, or I suck your dick, don't ever disrespect me and call me my ding and maricon. And my mother started yelling because one of the guys had a gun. Yeah. And the guy's like, "What the fuck is your problem?" And he goes, "What I told you, don't mm-hmm. you ever disrespect me again." Yeah. And my mother kept yelling, my thing, put the gun down, Coquito's right behind you. Mm-hmm. If he would have pulled out his gun, there would have been a shootout right there. Right, there. yeah. So uh, he looked. He didn't look at my mother. He told my mother uh-huh. that he needs to see this. Yeah. Even though I'm a fag, you got to respect me like a man. Right. Okay, don't Holy you ever shit. call me that. Uh-huh. He put the fucking gun away, and my mom started telling him, you're not allowed in here no more. 
Get the fuck up, Martin. How can you do something like that? Martin went and got a bus, and Arnardo and the other guy started saying, next time we see him, we're going to put a bullet in him and all this shit. Mm -hmm. And two days later, I was home at my house, and he knocked on the door. I didn't even know it was him. Yeah. I go, what's up, man? He goes, listen, I thought about what happened, mm -hmm. and I was very disrespectful for pulling that gun out in front of you. Mm -hmm. uh, things could have happened. I just wanted to apologize to you myself. I'm gonna go apologize to your mother now. And he was my, always my mother's friend after that. Yeah. But when he apologized to me, I remember saying to him, no, 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 you're my hero. Yeah. Like you pulled a gun out on somebody. <laughs> I never saw, like I saw my stepdad pull a uh -huh. gun on somebody. And he was serious. Yeah. That's like out of a, <clears throat> like all, out of a movie. And all those beatings uh -huh. with him getting jumped every night. Mm -hmm. So I kind of, I asked him once, what happened to your hand? Three fucking, and he would call them faggots. Mm -hmm. Everybody going to me, they jumped on me and beat me. That's where it was unsettled. Like right. being gay was not settling yeah. then. And I became friends with him, and we were friends until about 1981 until I robbed him. And then, <laughs> Did you really <laughs> rob yes. him? Yes. <laughs> oh, was, man. And even then, he would he knew I would go to my mother's grave, so mm -hmm. he would leave notes at my mother's grave. When I see you, I'm going to kill you. Oh, Ooh. my God. <laughs> oh, have you written this shit in a movie? I told this on the. I told this story in a on a, one of the, this is not happening. Yeah, that guy always stuck with me. I feel like you got so many good stories. Oh no, we got oh my we God. got all day. But it's funny that uh, I just always one of my dearest friends when I was eight. Mm -hmm. I really knew he was gay. Yeah, you know, like. He, and he was fucking chicks like a motherfucker. Really? Yeah, until he really? was 16 because in 1976, you just couldn't come out mm -hmm. of the closet. In 1980, you just didn't come out of the closet and got yeah. accepted. If you came out of the closet, your family would throw you out of the house. Yeah. Especially if you were Italian or from Jersey. Right. You know, it's like a, a girl from Jersey dating a black guy. You're done. You can't even come to the neighborhood no more. You I'm, know, they won't respect you. I'm right. sorry. I'm not that way, but there are people that think yeah. that way. and. But you weren't that way because you had friends. Like I feel like it's the people that don't have friends or like what don't have the, a personal connection to a gay person. I have never. I could tell you, look at you in the eye and tell you this. I've had fifty to a hundred gay friends. I was involved with drugs, mm -hmm. and I've never had a gay man come to me, come on to me, oh, not yeah? even as a joke. Like some, like sometimes, oh, you're looking good today, Joey. Don't make me show my friends to you. Yeah, they like uh, what? What my friend used to say. I had a gay acting coach for a while, uh -huh. and he would go up my place. They love bears like you. He would always call <laughs> me a bear. Is that yeah. what bears? Yeah, bear. Yeah, yeah. He would always say, "I don't get insulted by that." Uh huh. It's if you grab my crotch. Yeah, you don't want that. I've never been disrespected by a gay man. Never, yeah, but ever, I've... ever, ever at all. I don't think anyone would, would want to disrespect you though. You have that thing that kind of commands respect. Well, if that you energy, want, if you know you know what want I mean? respect, you got to give respect. Yeah, I have gay, I have robbed gay man's, uh, grabbed gay man's asses. Yeah, I, have, I took a gay guy, <laughs> yeah. I took a gay guy's hand and put it on my dick one time, not on the, raw, but over the jeans. Eric, <laughs> not raw, Eric. I would never do that just to break the ice. Yeah, I don't oh, want you to be nervous. Yeah. The ice. Hey, buddy, come yeah, here. Come here, you cute little <laughs> motherfucker. Let me slap you in the ass. And they go crazy because they expect a guy like me not to like them. Yeah, that's why I was, They expect yeah. a guy like me to reject them. I will, if I know you're gay, I will make out those shoes. You know, like when yeah. you get on the plane and the stewardess is as gay as a three dollars Right, thing. oh, so many. Them animals. motherfuckers, I lay into from the time <laughs> yeah. I get on the plane. Your hairdo is magnificent tonight. But see, that's the thing and that's great about you. they love it. Yes. You're goofing on them, but at the same time, they're loving it. Yeah, like, because you shoes. are showing acceptance. Oh, my God. I have not seen those shoes since Cats 1982. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. I love Cats. <laughs> uh, that's because we don't we don't expect it from, uh, you know, I would think people would think of you like as a tough guy. Who's the best hugger at the comedy store? Um, Justin Martindale. Nobody gives you a better hug than Justin Martin. That's true. That's Nobody. True. When Justin Martin hugs me, my back breaks a little bit. Like, <laughs> I get a little sensual. And I remember it's, it's Justin. He's my friend. I can't be copping a feel on him. But I think Justin's been a good He's influence a guy. on the, yeah. the guys at the store. You yeah. know, like and it's Adam nice Barnhart. to have that. No, yeah. really, I don't. I, I've never really heard, especially in my world, 
And I'm a dirty motherfucker. I've never said, I'm not going to eat that fag comedian. Nah, 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 nah. I never. Yeah. We're all brothers. Nobody gives a better hug than Justin Martindale. Mm-hmm. And nobody was a bigger comedy friend to me when I was on drugs than uh, your boy. When I was having my problems, well, he was there for me. He was clean for a long time. Yeah. Who are you talking about? Upstairs, Sunday nights. Oh, Adam. The class with me. Yeah. There was a time when he was uh-huh. Captain AA. Yeah, right. And he was struggling. He mm-hmm. was struggling. And we would talk on the phone. Yeah. It had nothing to do with that. Uh, no, mm-hmm. no, no. When it comes to that shit, listen, man. I, my mother didn't raise me to, to be, like, hateful. Of, right. No, no, no. I love that. I love that. Uh, now pedophiles, I'll fuck your shit up. Well, yeah, that's, that's a whole. I used to drag course, those in Hudson man. County Park and fucking beat the fuck out of them. You would the good. Yeah, those guys that's that come fuck, over that are confused. Up. That they want to come over and get their dick sucked by sixteen-year-old boys. We would beat them up. Yeah, from time to time. I mean, there might not even be a way for you to answer this. Well, mm-hmm. he was saying like we have a, a close gay friend. I've always had gay friends. Do you think it's a different experience for the gay guys versus gay girls, or is it similar? Like, yeah. You think it's different? I think it's harder for I think it's harder for gay men to get accepted around straight men, um, and I think straight men have a give lesbians a little more leeway. <clears throat> I think um, it's changing, and uh, but I I feel like I would get accepted by men because there was no threat there. You know, they're like, oh, it's just like it's like a buddy, right? Versus like some straight men don't feel comfortable around gay men. That's, it, I never thought about that. Yeah. What was that? I'm sorry. Just that uh, she she feels like it's harder for gay guys to get accepted rather than like a lesbian. Like uh-huh. I feel like so I feel like a lot of straight men aren't as accepting of uh gay men. They're they're like feel threatened or feel uncomfortable, but I think straight men don't seem as intimidated by lesbians. No. No. Between us yeah. us talking my mother encouraged me to be friends to everybody. Mm-hmm. My stepfather, on the other hand, could not be in a room if there was a gay man in that room. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, and that. He would not let a gay man touch his head. Mm-hmm. He wouldn't spit on a gay guy, but he wouldn't go out of his way to make conversation with him. His right. inner, his mental block, his beliefs mm-hmm. in a young world. He told me, he goes, in Cuba, if you were gay, yeah, the parents would take you shark hunting because it was like a shame. Oh, really? Yeah. The, you know, if you look at the uh, yeah, in the Latin community, it's very, really very, tough. Mm-hmm. No, some parents are a hundred percent accepted. Right. The ones, the revolutionary cute, like if you watch Celia, she had a brother. Uh huh. They killed that motherfucker. Really? The adult took over, killed that little gay boy. Mm-hmm. You know that wasn't uh, big. Now Cuba does what they do, whatever. Yeah. But my. The, gener- the two generations before me, they were raised to be. I walk into a barbershop, there's a gay guy, I gotta walk out. Yeah. I did not. I would say, I would ask him, you're embarrassing me. I'm not gonna stand in there with that faggot and yell it. Mm-hmm. Really? Yeah. Really? So huh. that's the thing. Yeah. That some people are raised to that. It's. And some people, I look at them as human beings. And yeah. I have fun with them and I write jokes. Oh, that's and, the best way to you be. You know, I used to get drugs at Ramrods. When I was 19, I used to go to a gay. It's called Ramrods? It was a super sized three floors of fucking gay shit. <laughs> Lesbians on the second floor with lingerie. There were lesbians swapping, was, uh, swapping spit, listening to like soft jazz. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Bu- the building, first floor was building gay things. guys. <laughs> and the third floor was the people who want fists up their ass. Yeah. Which I never knew. <laughs> you didn't go up to that floor. No, that's where you got to get the You got to go to the third floor, the game of debt. <laughs> oh, really? You got to go to the top floor <laughs> to get the goods. Everyone's ramming each other up there. Oh, my there. God. I saw a guy giving a blowjob one night up there. It was a work of art. <laughs> They're good at it. Nobody did, could suck a dick like a Did man. you learn anything by watching? No, I watched him. Well, the guy was upside down that he was blowing. Oh, my God. So all the blood was in his head. So okay. when you suck somebody's dick and their blood's in their head, your dick ain't got nowhere to go. So this guy was sucking his dick at the speed of motion, like a choo-choo train. You ever see like those wheels on a choo-choo train? And he was focused, and uh-huh. he was just looking at the guy's balls. Oh he was perfect throat. It was like he learned from the Russians. Yeah. Perfect throat usage. You ever see a Russian run? They run perfect. They, their back is but, straight. Yeah, the whole... And I didn't learn nothing, but I was like, damn. You were just impressed. Yeah. Yeah. If I'm going to get a dick sucking, that's the way to go. That's for right. a small nickel. 
maybe ten bucks, whatever he's working over there. <laughs> oh, I thought you made five hundred. You made five dollars. <laughs> in those days, it was the eighties. A gay guy would suck your dick for a small five dollars. Yeah, you got a cute guy like yourself. Well, <laughs> I, 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 yes. I would expect it to be at least ten. No, I already discussed when I'm going to pimp you out when things get rough. I'm oh gonna, yeah. Oh yeah. He has a couple on, different scenarios. I'm going to put him on that app grinder. And send oh, to for different, sure. That's what I do from KTLA. Met that guy. Yeah, on that's grind the, that's the four place. grinder dates. Uh huh. That's what those motherfuckers will kill you. They'll cut your head and put it in the refrigerator like Dama, it's... and then jerk off on your little skull every <laughs> fucking day. You got to be careful online now. <laughs> they open up your mouth in the freezer. And yeah. Are bump. you on any dating sites? I'm on the. I'm on He's Tinder. On everything. And Bumble, He's on everything. My buddy's on Grinder, and that's it's pretty intense. Well, yeah, because they just want to fuck. Yeah, they don't care at all. Yeah. You could drop him off anywhere. A friend. Uh huh. He's like, He'll get out of the car yeah. anywhere, and he puts the app out. He presses a button. He gets like a a, a signal, like a bat, like Batman, <laughs> a, gay bat a, a gay bat signal hits the top. And before you know it, the car's pulling up before we even make the corner. Those gay guys have it down to a they science. Got it down. It's so interesting. But that's because there's no woman to pump the brakes. You got two dudes, just horny fuckers, just yeah. like let's get to it. It's the woman who's always like, oh, wait, wait. How did you meet your fiance? Uh, I met her at Gay Pride in Chicago. Really? Yeah, we were. I was there just hanging out, and she was there. We had mutual friends, and we just started talking. And as lesbians do, we've basically <laughs> been together ever since. Now, have you had exes? Have you had a couple of exes out I, there? Yeah, I mean, I definitely dated people before her and exes girlfriend. call you up and say you're fucking big time now i de- they pop up here and there for sure because they, they don't want to be friends with me still and I, some of them i don't want to be friends with and some of them i, w- I would am friends with but i just don't see them very much but you know you definitely have those people who because i i'm on television or whatever they think i'm successful they are trying to continue to be in my orbit but you know, you just let that. I mean, because I'm engaged now. Like, we've been together three and a half years. Like, I know there are lesbians who are friends with their exes, but I'm just kind of like, I'm just living my like. Why, you know, like, I've got my fiance. We're living our life, and I don't. I have a lot of friends. I don't need to necessarily go hang out with my exes. You know what I mean? When are you getting married? When is the date? For you? We don't have a date, but probably probably next year. Tell sometime. me about your ideal wedding. Well, I don't want that traditional ceremony. You know, I don't want to like be in it. Well, I can't be in a lot of churches. They don't allow it. Uh, <laughs> I'm, not, them. I'm not allowed I'm to do that. I'm talking about you on a fucking horse. I want to be on a horse, I'm Joey. Uh, you know, nothing like that. I don't right? want more. I think I want like the ceremony part to be like how a rehearsal dinner would be. Like just dinner with my friends uh, and, and family and get married in front of like 20 people. But I want a big party. I don't. I only care about a big celebration. So the wedding, what I would invite people to, would just be like the, what the reception would be at a wedding, but without all the Your ceremony. Your family, everybody's good. Yeah, everybody's good. You do good. it in Carolina or in Chicago? Probably here. Probably. Here. Yeah, I've been out here sixteen years. And what are you fucking poor it, folks gonna do in North Carolina? They're gonna. Cut, they'd come out here. Jesus Christ. I'm not getting cold married cold in North water. Carolina. Fucking. Nice in the, in the Rocky Mountains. They chased North- me with a Bible out of there. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, they're, people in my hometown are really cool about it. But I just, all my friends are here. I don't want to make a bunch of people have to fly to North Carolina, you know? So it's easier for my family to come here. I don't know where we'll get married. It's, I mean, it's everything's so expensive, but. I'm really hoping Martha Stewart will just throw me a wedding. No, I just get married. In a fuck. <laughs> I get don't married know. Where... One of those chapels on Wilshire. Mm-hmm. They have those fake chapels. You go in there and you can put the set. That's why I got married. You really? They yeah. have a they have a chapel on uh, Coldwater. That little yeah. brown. Thing. Oh and yeah. You turn so it to tiny. whatever you want. Yeah. You can have little pictures of Elvis. <laughs> They'll put a different screen. You can be at the Grand Canyon. Yeah. You and her, and then rent out a fucking hall. I rented yeah. out the hall at the Hollywood Bowl. And oh I yeah! Invited, on a Wednesday, Didn't there's a, a hall Wednesday. at the Hollywood Bowl. Yes, before you get to the Hollywood Bowl, down the corner, uh-huh. there's a little hall, oh, and they gotcha. have a kitchenette yeah, in there, and it's, uh-huh. it's, it's like sixty people, but there's rocks behind there. Yeah, and we were going outside and smoking. Uh huh. And I got married. Listen, when first, did you get married? How long ago was that? Uh, Two thousand nine. Okay. And I got married on Wilshire. Uh huh. We picked up uh, fried pork chunks from El Cochinito, uh-huh. pastrami from Langas, the best fucking. There Jewish you go. sandwiches in town, uh-huh. and we picked up a hundred pieces of fried chicken 
from uh, uh, Ralph's. They cooked it fresh for uh -huh. us because my wife's from the South. Yeah. And no gifts allowed. Yeah. I didn't want any gifts. I didn't want nobody to feel stressed. Or right, whatever. right. Dress how you want. Uh -huh. If you can't come, it's cool. Yeah. And it was one of the best weddings I ever went to. We had a little music, we yeah. danced, I cut a cake. There you go. And I don't, I don't like weddings that are drama. No, I don't want I don't some like long, drama. boring, drawn out thing. You know. Yeah. But, uh, no, Coach, we... I'm, I'm happy you got on here today. I Me learned too, a lot Joey. about you. I didn't know that you were a writer and all that stuff. Yeah, I, I, it means a lot to get to do this because, you know, it's the, coming up at the comedy store. I was, I'm a little shy. Like people don't know that about me because I play crazy characters, but I'm a little shy. So when I was coming up at the store, I had a tendency to sort of be more of the observer. I would kind of be in the corner watching people. And I, I'm friends with plenty of stand ups, but I didn't really put myself out there in the way that everybody knows each other so well. And I would have like nice individual relationships with stand ups, but I never felt like I was like one of the one of the guys or one of the crew but like the stand-ups have been so nice to me and in the last couple of years especially it really reached out to me and I really just appreciate people I don't know the other stand-ups showing me love and showing me respect it means it means a lot to me you know how tough it is in the stand-up business to get men's respect mm -hmm. you have any idea you either got to suck our dick, <laughs> which is or, not happening, or drive us to the next gig. Yeah, or you have to do something. Right. You know? When I look at you, when I look at Eliza and everybody, I give you all the same respect. I have a six-year-old. Mm -hmm. What happens if my fucking little retard here wants to get into comedy? <laughs> right. I want, <laughs> you know, because only a retard would get into comedy. <laughs> right. But what if my little retard wants <sighs> to get into comedy? I want her to. Get the same respect I give you, yeah. that I give Whitney, that I give uh, any other woman comic, Sarah yeah. Kiana. Doesn't matter. You've earned the respect. You've gunned it out in there with men. Mm -hmm. You know, I, my mother was one of you. You right. know, not a lesbian. Right, right. <laughs> no, my, not my, really. My one mother of you. was one of you yeah. guys. Yeah. That you walked into a room and you go, "I'm here." Mm -hmm. If you fold, you're done. Yeah. You can't show us your fear. Yeah. That's very tough for a woman. Mm -hmm. I had a birthday party a couple of weeks ago, and I invited mostly men, mm -hmm. a couple of girls. I did that for a reason, so my daughter could feel comfortable mm -hmm. around a group of men. She learns how to have confidence. She learns how to compose herself. Right. No, you shut the fuck up. Mm -hmm. Don't ever tell me to shut the fuck up. You shut the fuck up. <laughs> yeah. When you have a woman that knows how to say that, because a guy will say, you don't know what you're talking about. Shut the fuck up. No, bitch. You shut the mm -hmm. fuck up. And what? What motherfucker? I'll cut you in this head with this bottle. Yeah, and that's how you get respect from men. Yeah, men walk out of the room going, "Fuck, I'll never say nothing to Fortune again." You know what I'm saying? I you don't. It. You I, don't get it by arguing uh, and then crying at the end of the conversation. You don't get it. That's when we fuck with you. I guess I should give thanks to my two older brothers for yes. beating the shit yes. out of me. <laughs> give me a fucking... What, back what back in the day. What nationality are you? Uh, like Irish, yeah. Scottish. Listen, yeah. There's no tougher people in the world than an Irish sister who had nine brothers. Yeah. Because we've done they, everything oh, to you. I get if they didn't punched, kill you... I get punched. If they yeah. didn't kill you... <laughs> <laughs> they put you under the hamper. Remember when they put you in the hamper and lived uh -huh. and they sat on top of them blue cigarette smoke in there. <laughs> Irish brothers do all that They're shit. The, for their I would, they, they said when I was a kid, they would like uh, try to get me to come towards the steps to fall down the steps. They'd be like, "Come here, come here. like they were little shitheads. <coughs> but I guess it doesn't make you tougher. But I just yeah, I've been, I've had a lot of really great stand ups be really good to me. Bill Burr has been like one of the best dudes to me. A lot of it's just so much respect from the guys at the comedy store. We just see it. We see it. I just I know who's faking. I know who's down there pulling down her shirt mm -hmm. to show me cleavage. Yeah, and I know who's up there. Oh, I'm gonna show you some titties. Oh, right. all right. I'll show them the <laughs> Send them a picture on the phone. Where are you performing this week? Uh, I'm in London all week. We have a lot of family. We have a lot of church yeah. family in London. I'm in so, London. Yo, come do to your Soho, thing. Tacoma, Washington, Kansas City, St. Louis, Columbia, Missouri. All those are in Missouri. Uh, and Houston, Texas. So come okay. out to a show. Fortune. Speaking of Houston, I will be in Houston this week. Yes. Uh, Fortune, thank you again thank for you, being Joey. on the show. Uh, Christ Killer. Yes, sir. Who loves you more than me, Cuck Houston, I'm coming. And I think all the shows are sold out. A four out of five is sold out. So get your shit together. It's all over, but the shouting. 
I'll be there this weekend, all right? And now for a word from our sponsors. All right, I want to thank Fortune Feimster. I want to thank the fucking Christ Killer Extraordinary. And I want to thank you guys for making it. It's a beautiful fucking day to be alive. It's going to be a great week. Monday, I'm going to Houston. But the Church of What's Happening Now is brought to you by Manscaped. Let me tell you something. From time to time, I get a little itches down there. And before I go on the road, I know it's because I don't condition my fucking pubes. And sometimes the pubes get dry and I get itchy down there. So I just had my wife fucking trimming my nutsack with a conventional fucking razor. You don't know what fear factor is till you have somebody trimming your fucking razors and you're looking up begging that nothing bad happens to you. That all ends till the Uncle Joey got something for you. Manscaped. You get it done without the pain and the anxiety. They got precision tools for the family fucking gunules. Man ha Manscaped has redesigned the electric razor. The Lawnmower 2.0 is their handheld razor with skin safe technology. So it will nick or snag your nutsack. Or if you're uncircumcised like me, that little fucking wind fucking tunnel at the end of your dick. This bad boy will leave you clean, smooth, and pain free. Most importantly, anxiety free. Plus, it's rechargeable and easy to hold. You can take it on the road with you. So you can get into all the nooks and crannies. You follow me? And they got a classic safety razor called the plow that will give you a smooth shave without the humps and bumps. Listen, if you want to trim your asshole, take it upon yourself. And you know what they say. If you trim the hedges, the tree looks taller. You follow me? So what the fuck are you waiting for? Stop fucking around. Your dick looks like a fucking, you know, like got hit with a hammer and a thousand other things. Trim it. Make it look nice. You ever go to a nice restaurant, they give you like a slice of orange with the eggs. They make the dish look nice. The food tastes like shit. You follow me? But they make it look nice. I want you to have that area nice. So the perfect package comes with the lawnmower and the plow, plus the crop preserver, a specially formulated anti-shaving deodorant so your balls don't stink. Trust me, this thing works tremendous. Plus they got the Reviver, a spritz that tones and refreshes your nutsack, plus your little anal area there to keep your nuts cool. Now, the church family gets 20% off your first order when you use promo code CHURCH at manscaped.com. And if you order the perfect package, throw, throw in a free travel bag when you use promo code CHURCH. That's manscaped.com. Use promo code CHURCH for 20% off your first order. Like I said, it's Monday. Wash your nutsack. Now, after you got your area all cleaned and everything... Listen, you got to get everything together. I know there's people who got problems out there, and they're for all different reasons. Sexual performance issues are more common than what you think. One in four guys suffer from ED, but it can be treated. Over 25% of new ED cases are coming from men under 40. Why do men turn to weird solutions or do nothing when they can instead turn to medicine and science? Because getting older sometimes means certain parts of the body might not be working like they should. They start revving that engine up again, and, and with ED treatment for hymns, you'll be back. Go to 4 a one-stop shop for hair loss, skin care, and sexual wellness for men. Listen to me. Don't get defrauded by online sketchy marketplaces. 4 provides convenient access to U.S. doctors online and real medicine dispensed from American pharmacies. All right? Slide on them, Phil. The active ingredient in Viagra can be prescribed for men online and delivered right to your door. It's comp comp completely confidential and discreet. Nobody knows nothing. You don't got to bump into the secretary, you know, the, the nurse at the fucking supermarket. No more awkward in-person doctor visits along pharmacy line. You save hours by going to 4 Bring your best means performing your best. It's hard, made easy. This has been featured in GQ, Men's Health, Esquire and Playboy, to name a few. So what I'm going to do for you is this. You don't need to suffer from ED or hair loss or any of that stuff. You got to nip, nip it in the bud, and that's what 4 hymns does. Do me a favor. This first month, because you're church family, you get it for 5 bucks. We'll get you started for $5 while supplies last and subject to doctor approval. Restrictions apply, so see the website for full details. This could cost you hundreds if you went to a doctor or pharmacy, go to 4 slash church. That's 4 slash right now. Go to the website. You know you're suffering from this. Go to that website. Go to 4 and press in church on the way out. I'm going to give you the first month for $5. That's how Uncle Joey takes care of you on a Monday morning. Again, I want to thank 4 
I want to thank Manscaped.com. I want to thank Fortune. I want to thank the Christ Killer, but I want to thank you motherfuckers for letting me come into your life on a Monday morning. I love you guys. Have a great week. Houston, see you Thursday night, cocksuckers. Kick this mule, Lee. A little Tony Bennett there for these motherfuckers.